Yo, what is going on guys? I'm back with another video and today I am on like Zora, literally the best custom 667 RSPS around. In today's video I'll be doing a little showcase about the server because it has been a very long time since I last logged in on here and there's so much brand new amazing content that I want to showcase as well as showcase a brand new super unique raid custom for Exora and it has a lot of different mechanics so I'll be doing half of the video just about that raid. Now before we get into today's video I just want to announce a really juicy giveaway of 100 credits. There will be one lucky winner winning all of these 100 credits. All you have to do to enter the giveaway so make sure you are subscribed make sure to turn on notifications make sure to leave a like and comment your in-game name down below the winner will be picked in just about two days as always they will be announced in my community discord in the service discord and on my pinned comment links of discords are down below in the description so definitely make sure to join those one of the many things I love about Exora is how cool their Slayer system is. First of all, you can get a Slayer task right here at the home area. They have a nice little Slayer camp set up. Anyways, whenever you want to get a task, you can get so. And then with the points that you get, you get some really juicy rewards here. So starting off, these are some items that you will be able to purchase with a certain amount of points. First of all, this is very nice because of course you can get some experience lamps that you would be able to use on anything. Some mystery boxes, all that stuff. But where it's most interesting is in the learn section. There are a bunch of things that you can learn, including unlocking different NPCs, also including the um, uh, Angus drop rate increase right here, which is really cool. The Angus raid and also the faceless drop uh, or the faceless raid right here. Um, but pretty much a bunch of NPCs that you can unlock. Also, learn how to receive double monster parts. Also, something really interesting is the monster parts that they have on the server. Pretty much all the Slayer NPCs or all the monsters can drop a monster parts. These can be combined right here in the monster machine to create multiple different mystery boxes. As you can see, there are a bunch of mystery boxes that you will be able to get through um, all of these monster parts that you will get through Slayer. So that's something very nice as well. Now, of course, it doesn't end there because everything is so custom. They also have very beautiful custom dungeons. And some of the dungeons that I haven't gone to yet is the Willwood dungeon, for example. Now, this looks very beautiful. This is so pretty to be fair. Also, all of these NPCs here are custom, including with that you have custom pads, you also have custom um, drops that you will be able to obtain, like custom art armor sets and so on. Also, some of these, which are the pieces that I was just talking about for the monster um, boxes that you will be able to obtain. And as you can see, a bunch of different beautiful custom NPCs around the full zone right here, and all of these will be able to get as a Slayer task as well. Now one more dungeon that I actually want to show off is once again if we go to the dungeons uh, we have the Drevonic Cave. I have been here but it has been updated since the last time that I logged in so I wanted to check this one out as well. And as you can see it's very beautiful. You have the full like desert like dungeon. In here of course you have the Drevonic Demons and these can also drop some beautiful things including this Drevonic Key which you can then use on the chest that's located right here in the middle which is also very nice. Now another super unique thing about Exora is battle pads. Pretty much if you have a pad you can go ahead and examine that pad and then you will get into this interface right here. So you can get uh, so you can add some armor, a ring and also an enchantment right here to help out your pad. You can also level your pad up by using certain foods. As you can see you would need 100 grand fast, 100 royal fish feast, 100 grand element feast and then 500 elemental dust to level up to uh, the next level but already uh, my pad is level 45 which is super high. Now the higher your pet level is, the more damage it will be able to do, the more drop rate it will give you and so on, which is really nice. Another new addition to Exora is this rift that you'll find here at the home area. Pretty much you will be able to teleport into this rift and this will leave you to a resource dungeon and this looks once again so beautiful. The amount of attention that Exora puts into the details of dungeons and NPCs just like this, Hellside Basilisks, another custom NPC here, but the attention to detail that they put into everything that they make is just so insane. This server makes customs to a next level. You'll have custom trees, custom orbs, everything right here in this fully custom um, resource dungeon and that is absolutely beautiful if you ask me. So right now we are here in the Raids lobby to check out the new raid, the Undying Vengeance raid, which is the brand new raid into Exora and also the hardest raid that you will find in the game, which is very beautiful of course. 
Anyways, to start off, of course, you go to create a party right here. Um, but you, of course, do need to have completed 50 of these faceless kings. Anyways, once you have a party, you can invite more members. Now, do keep in mind, the more members that you have in your raid, the more difficult the raid will actually be. It scales together with the amount of players that you have in your party. So for this raid, once you get into here, the first thing you want to do is get one of these torches that you will see on the floor. This torch is going to be very important because once you enter the room right here, as you can see, it will become dark. So the first thing you will have to do is light up your torch. For the rest, these minions will spawn all around the room. Make sure to kill these minions as quickly as possible because these will, of course, help out the boss. The more minions that will reach the boss, the more damage he will be able to do. And that is, of course, something that you do not want. Um, on top of that, there will be two waves of these minions in the beginning, so definitely make sure to keep an eye open for that, because as I said, you don't want these minions to reach the boss itself, which is the Undying King, and this is the first boss out of here. Um, there are multiple bosses in this raid, so this is quite a difficult raid, one of the most, actually the most difficult raid that you'll find in here. Now, during the fight itself, as you can see, he will be able to charge you like that. You can try to avoid it, but I just didn't make it in time. So that's one of the things that you will have to watch out for as well. Now, one of the other things he will be able to do is spawn some sort of fire. So um, at some point, he might make the room dark just like that. And now you have to stand on a safe tile. And that is, of course, tile where you do not get hit by this orange thing. And um, for some reason, I keep getting damaged here. So I'm trying to avoid it as much as possible. But as you can see, I took quite a lot of damage there. You also only have two lives in this raid, which means if you die twice during the full raid, you will not be able to enter the room again, meaning you will not be able to complete the raid. So that's something you do have to keep an eye for, open for as well, because you do not want to die, of course, and lose the full raid progress after you have done quite a lot of damage. Now, as you can see, at some point in the raid, I think about 25% of its HP, uh, when that is done, you will be able to get, uh, or you will see some more of these minions spawn, and you will have to go ahead and kill these again. And um, there once again will be two different waves of these minions that will be spawned. So once again, try to kill these as quickly as possible and um, try to get them out of the way so you can move back onto the boss itself. And for the rest, I'll be back with the next mechanic. Meanwhile, I'll be speeding up the clip or speeding up the kill and putting some background music. So just sit back, relax and chill while I am killing this boss for the first time together with you guys. And here we go, I think that is the first boss completed. Now moving on from that, here you should protect either ranged or magic. There will be four NPCs on the passageway. I think you can just run past them without actually having to do anything. And this is where we get to the next phase. Once again, there are some more NPCs here that you will have to try to avoid, including the new Vengeful King, which is the second boss that you will be able uh, that you will have to complete. Now you'll have to try to get through all of these stepping stones with your whole team to get through the to the other side. Um, so as you can see, we just managed to make it right there, which is very beautiful. There are some of these green dots, which are pretty uh, pretty much these poison balls or something, and these will damage you. So do keep a mind open for that. Once again, every possible way has these NPCs so you cannot kill these or it, it, there's like no real reason to go ahead and kill these also I forgot but you do have to kill these um, bombs right here from the explosive table and this is really important as well so for this boss fight as you can see there will be multiple cannons you'll have to go as close to these cannons as possible and then use your tinderbox once again um, onto the massive bombs or use the massive bombs on here. How does this fully work again? Normally I should be able to do this, but I fully have no idea how I should be doing this. Give me one second here. Okay. 
Okay, so apparently you have to use the torch on the bombs and not the tinderbox and I also have to eat up sec like, fuck that there, there we go that I lost my first life because I did not know how to do the bomb that is fully my bad um, at least I still have one more life left left so let's go ahead and use the torch here so we can actually go ahead and destroy this cannon as well now once this cannon is destroyed or all four cannons are destroyed you will be able to turn back onto the boss and the boss once again has multiple different mechanics as well including these minions once again a full round of minions that you will have to defeat um, and then at some point I think about halfway HP of the boss we will have to go ahead and fight him on those pillars as well but um, yeah I will once again speed up the clip for now until we get to a new mechanic or a new phase in the boss fight so we can move on from that and explain what's going on there Now these arrows work very similar to the um, phase we had earlier where you had to avo avoid the fire bombs pretty much and you have to stand in a square that is not affected by these arrows as you can see I just managed to eat up to full HP because these arrows do deal quite a lot of damage so you definitely have to watch out for those. So at this point I think he just went to the pillars so we have to take some additional bombs as you can see my man Benny is helping me out here. Uh, so we have to take some additional bombs for later and I believe now we either go back up to the stairs to the other platform or we um, stay here I'm not 100% sure but I think yeah we have to go up to the stairs back to the pillars now because this is where the boss is going to be and we will have to damage him or attack him from throughout these pillars so once again for this phase you can only use ranged and magic there is no melee option right here also as you can see I'm getting damaged by this poison bomb you have to keep an eye open for those as well because you of course do not want to take too much damage from those I also got myself a bottomless Sarah and brew this thing is super useful especially in places like this where you will have to heal up quite a lot because this will of course make sure that you have quite a lot of HP during the um, boss fight of course you will not be able to like lose this at any point during the fight which is super awesome but anyways let's go ahead and get back to some music and hopefully finish this phase off quickly so we can move on to the final phase Right, so as you can see the boss is now teleporting away and we can move back to the other room where we can finish the boss off. Now once again the cannons will be active here but this time around the cannons normally should uh, attack the boss instead of us. Um, I think we once again have to go ahead and kill these cannons though I'm not 100% sure on that so yeah let me go ahead and use these stand right next to those once again. Oh, go ahead and use my torch next to the cannons and that should defeat the cannons and now we should be able to finish off the boss and get to the chest right there in the final room which shouldn't take too long anymore he has 250,000 HP exactly the same as the first boss so they do have quite a lot of HP also some phases make it so that you will not be able to deal, uh, deal damage to them but if you are able to deal damage especially with gear like we have right now we should be able to kill him off pretty quickly as you can see we already got him down to 25,000 HP now I am not 100% sure if there are going to be any additional mechanics uh, on top of what we already saw um, but I don't think so I think the rest of the kill is going to be very smooth and we should be able to finish him off any second here now and get to our final loot eventual victory the south passage has opened and we can now go to the undying vengeance chest and this is of course where you claim your loot and we actually managed to get ourselves an elite virtus rope top which is pretty damn cool that is one of the rare drop tables of course not the most rare drop table but still pretty cool to see so one last thing about the undying raid is of course the drops we still haven't mentioned those yet so for this i'm going to the collection log so we can see all the possible drops that you are able to obtain from this Starting off, you can get Vengeful and Undying Shards. These are, of course, the shards that you would find from the two bosses that you would find in the raid. Also, you can get yourself some Solari, some Dark Lord, some Neon, some Elite sets. But moving down is where we see the interesting new drops, and that is a full Vengeful armor set, the full Undying armor set with their according weapons, capes, and so on, which is, of course, absolutely beautiful. Also, this Enchantment of the Kings, and um, yeah, a lot of really juicy drops from here, so it's definitely worth doing this raid if you have the option to do so. 
Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you didn't already. Also, make sure to enter the giveaway and definitely make sure to check out Exora, which looks just so good. But with all that said, I'll be catching you guys in my next video. So take care and peace.